on my back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> One, two, three, toss. Good morning. We all love trees, and let's show our love even more for trees by seeing more of them in our city. That's what this initiative that we are pushing with our American Rescue Act dollars is all about. You know, trees have so many uses. There's so many ways to enjoy a tree and that it can make our community stronger and more resilient. Uh, you know, you can sit under a tree and read a book. It provides the necessary shade. It pushes back on some of the heat islands that we have in our city. Uh, they absorb carbon and they put out oxygen, making the air fresher and cleaner in our neighborhoods. You can even climb them. Uh, and so trees are such a critical component of anything that we have in our city right now. And there are portions of Minneapolis that don't have enough of them. If you go over to Lake Harriet, you'll see these beautiful, lush landscapes and the tree canopy is positively incredible. However, if you're in either the north side or the south side green zones, north side or Phillips here on the south, uh, you know, you, you don't have as many trees and you can see that right here where we're on or abutting a highway. There's not a whole lot of canopy around us and because of that, we experience a bit of a heat island in some of the areas of our city that are already the lowest income and that aren't as able uh, to have the necessary tree canopy around. So that is what we're trying to work on right now with a $1 million investment uh, through ARPA. Uh, and by the way, with this new money, we also want to be branching out. Pardon the puns here. Uh, we're working with a number of different entities, whether that's Green Minneapolis or the Minneapolis Park Board. Uh, we're working with our wonderful staff at the city, led by uh, the, the Director of Sustainability and Kim Havey. Uh, and the goal here is to dramatically expand on that tree canopy over the next 19 or so years. Uh, right now, there are around 600,000 trees that are managed by the Minneapolis uh, Park Board here in our city. Our goal is to add to that number by 200,000. Now, that'll take us working on a number of different efforts. First, we lose between two and 3,000 trees uh, from that Minneapolis Park Board number on an annual basis. But the good news is that we have a one-to-one -one plant. So for every tree that we lose, the Park Board is doing a tremendous job of planting another one. But in order to grow the total number of trees in our city, we need to do that affirmative offense work where we're going in and literally planting as many trees as we possibly can. This is one of the great things that we can do for, for our environment. And when you think about environmentalism and sustainability and resiliency, you often think about doing less. In other words, you think about producing less of a carbon footprint, having less waste, driving your car or gas-powered automobile around less having a lower consumption of oil or coal. This is an instance where we can think about doing more, adding to our tree canopy, planting more trees, and doing something on offense that will help our communities for the long haul. So that, that's what this is about. There are so many people to thank. Many of them are about to speak right after me here. Uh, but first, I would like to invite up someone that has been pushing this particular initiative uh, since I can remember. We're talking about going back years here. Uh, and that is our Council Vice President, Lene Palmasano. She's been working with David Wilson and Green Minneapolis and the tremendous team over there to really get this right. And first, I'd like to welcome up our Council Vice President, Lene Palmasano. Thank you, Mayor Fry. You know, at the beginning of last year, the city stepped in to be involved in an aspirational and worthy idea, the Minneapolis Climate Resiliency Campaign. We started meeting with an increasing number of interjurisdictional partners, one that has public and private and nonprofit and even educational partners. Our mission was to transform Minneapolis into one of the most climate resilient cities and environmentally equitable cities in the country by the year 2040. That grew and it, there became the need for us to do this on a broader scale, not just on city-owned land. And I still believe we'll make this into one of the Midwest's largest first carbon offset accredited programs. This million dollar investment will help in many ways. It will help tree canopy across our city, which is decreasing. 
as population density increases, driven by the Minneapolis 2040 plan, the urban tree canopy must expand to offset the increases in air pollution, um, to offset our heat island effects, and ensure that Minneapolis neighborhoods provide a healthy environment for all residents. Climate change, invasive species, and population growth will continue to negatively impact tree canopy coverage. Our goals of this working group was to increase tree canopy coverage to 40% by 2040. We're working to mitigate the city's major heat islands, our north and south Minneapolis green zones sections, and also downtown, and make sure that we are prioritizing disadvantaged parts of our city. A green zone is a group of neighborhoods that face the combined impacts of environmental pollution um, and race, racial and economic marginalization. The Green Zone Initiative is a resident and city collaboration to support community health and economic development and the environment. We're also looking with this project to reduce the amount of stormwater flowing through storm sores. So I'm very pleased to see the mayor propose this investment. Our north side green zones include Hawthorne, McKinley, and near north neighborhoods and western portions of the northeast neighborhoods. Our south neighborhoods include the greater Phillips community and also our Cedar Riverside neighborhood. And here to speak to that more is Council Member Jamal Osman. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Council Vice President, and everyone here that has joined us today. I represent much of the South Side Green Zone, where industry and where this investment and where history collide. Our North and South Side Green Zone are areas where residents are exposed in more pollution, environmental harm, and negative health impact. The investment we are making on Green Zone help create more equitable Minneapolis. It's hard to appreciate how important rebuilding the, the trees in my ward. It will keep residents cooler, the air cleaner, and provide important habitat for wildlife. Increasing the street cover by one third, and this is the investment we are making here, will change our neighbors, neighborhoods. Along with the investment comes opportunities for youth, and other members of the world in the community to build jobs and maintain and care for the trees in our neighborhood. This investment and other from the ARP dollars are making Minneapolis stronger. So thank you so much everyone and thanks for the Mayor Jacob for, uh, and other council members who have really contributed a lot for this work. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Councilmember Osman, for all your work on this. And next, I'd like to invite up a real champion of this initiative who has been figuring out not just what the big vision is, but how to implement it, uh, our superintendent of the parks, Al Bangora. Yep. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Al Bangora. I'm the superintendent for the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. And I am absolutely pleased to be here today. Uh, in this role supporting the Green Minneapolis uh, Climate Resiliency Initiative. Uh, through our forestry department, MPRB manages and cares for over 600,000 trees throughout Minneapolis. That's an incredible number. Uh, this is includes nearly 200,000 boulevard trees and 1,100 miles of streets and also 400,000 trees in our parklands and our woodlands. You may, know, you may know that in 2014, in response to the emerald ash borer infestation, MPRB has been working to build a more diverse, resilient tree canopy throughout Minneapolis. And now we have, uh, and, and, and as we have prioritized adding, not just replacing, trees in the city's north and south green zone neighborhoods. We can keep the momentum going through the ARPA dollars and in funding in support of Green Minneapolis Climate Resiliency Initiative. It allows MPRB to plant a total of 18,000 trees in 2023 and 2024. 
with a focus on the green zones. This triples the number of uh, number we'd be planting with only NPRV general funds. So it's an incredible number, very excited about this. In addition, we welcome the opportunity for building community support in the ongoing planting and the growth of our trees in Minneapolis. We all know that our urban trees uh, are a critical component uh, of our climate future. Uh, more trees will sequester more carbon, capture more stormwater, and trap and filter more air pollution. More trees will also save energy and mitigate urban heat island effects. But I also want to point out that some of our other uh, direct benefits trees bring to the urban communities. Street trees slow traffic speeds and make urban roads safer for everyone. They reduce crime and increase opportunity and property values. And on a personal level, as we all know that the trees uh, get us, they, they get us outside um, to be more active. And then research shows that uh, trees help us in looking at and reducing stress and can improve our mental health, which is really important. So not surprisingly, as the leader of the major urban park system, I'm eager for this initiative to get started. Planting more trees makes a difference right now, especially in our green zones and our green zone communities. And that difference will only grow and spread out into more significant changes in our lives. I'm incredibly proud to be part of this opportunity, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, another champion of this program, going back quite some ways, our president uh, of the Park Board, Meg, Meg Forney. Thank you, Mayor Fry, and hello, everyone. I'm Meg Forney, president of the Minneapolis Park Board. Like the superintendent, I am so excited about the Minneapolis Park Board's partnership with Green Minneapolis in this initiative, working with Mother Nature to build a more resilient city. This is one of many sustainability initiatives that the Park Board is undertaking, so I'd like to share some of our work in this area. A key goal is reducing the Park Board's carbon footprint. Our first carbon accounting report completed in 2019 established an organization-wide baseline for greenhouse gas emissions. We surpassed our 10% reduction goal in just four years. Now we are setting a new ambitious goal for the next four years. To reach these goals, we are switching all of our recreation centers to 100% renewable electric energy. Woohoo! Completed um, energy efficiency audits at our ICE centers, our operation centers, and other major energy consuming buildings. We've improved and expanded citywide collection rates for organics, recycling, thanks to the Green Corps staff position funded through the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. We've established a data insights team so that carbon reduction and other sustainability work can be measured and amplified across the organization. We've installed six fleet charging stations for electric vehicles at our Southside Operations Center with the support of the MCPA and Excel Energy. We added an electric um, utility uh, vehicle to our, the four hybrid vehicles that are a part of the uh, Park Board's fleet. And we've purchased 13 battery operated equipment items. And we have uh, five additional electric vehicles on order, despite COVID-19 and the supply chain uh, limitations. Going forward, our transition to using more clean energy is guided by a fleet transition study for study for adding more hybrid and electric vehicles and by clean energy criteria for new and replacement of equipment for park and tree maintenance. Another goal now in progress is management plans to guide sustainable and equitable service levels for the park board's natural resources such as lakes and wetlands, natural areas and our urban forests. And for example, the Urban Forest Management Plan includes a pilot project to create, increase efficiency with mobile technology to expand work trading, tracking, and data collection. 
It also features a forestry outreach staff person to be hired this year. This person will coordinate outreach and stewardship programs for all ages for tree care, planting, maintenance activities, as well as educational and hands-on experiences in our urban forestry. These urban forestry efforts obviously dovetail with our tree planting partnership with Green Minneapolis. Whether it's growing the tree canopy, sustaining, uh, sustainably um, managing land or reducing carbon footprint, it's critical for the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board to be an environmental leader. And I'm also very proud to say that I and the other Park Board Commissioners are active, engaged, and utterly committed to this work. Thank you. Now uh, I'd like to invite up our Director of Sustainability, Kim Havey, who's been helping out a whole lot with implementation here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good afternoon, or I guess good morning, everyone. My name is Kim Havey. I'm Director of Sustainability, and I want to thank the Mayor and the Council members and Minneapolis Green and the MPRB for this awesome opportunity to invest in our green zones and to bring more trees to our community for all the reasons that uh, we heard from the other folks. Um, but I want to actually just read a couple of poems about trees um, to you today. And um, I'm going to get started with a poem by David Rosenthal named Trees Need Not Walk the Earth. Trees need not walk the earth for beauty or for bread. Beauty will come to them where they stand. Here among the children of the sap is no pride of ancestry. A birch may wear no less the morning than an oak. Here are no heirlooms, save those of loveliness, in which each tree is kingly in its heritage of grace. Here is but beauty's wisdom, in which all trees are wise. Trees need not walk the earth, for beauty or for bread. Beauty will come to them, in the rainbow, in the sunlight, and the lilac-haunted rain. And bread will come to them, as beauty came, in the rainbow, in the sunlight, in the rain. And just one other short one called Friendly Tree, This Is Your Day by Annette Wynn. Friendly tree, this is your day, so we'll stop our work and play and talk of you and all the good things that you do. Standing still and quiet there, sending branches into the air, making pleasant shade for all around, delving far beneath the ground, holding all your safe from harm, little nests within your arm keeping firmly where you are, reaching up to touch the star, growing, working, just as we, seeking God within the sky. Thank you, everyone, and thank you for the investment that we're making here in our communities. It's going to go a long way to achieving our, our climate action goals and our carbon reduction goals while improving the quality of life for our community. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, the chair of Green Minneapolis, David Wilson, someone who as long as I can remember has been talking about the greening of downtown, the greening of our city, and how to make that uh, greening and, and beautiful vision a reality. Good morning. I'm David Wilson, the board chair of Green Minneapolis. And thank you, Mayor Fry, for proposing this funding to plant thousands of new trees across our city's green zones. Green Minneapolis is committed to making Minneapolis, and in fact the entire Twin Cities metro area, more climate resilient. Climate change is threatening residents of Minneapolis today with hotter temperatures, destructive storms, extreme precipitation events, increased flooding, and degrading ecosystems and our community's least advantaged communities and residents are impacted the most. Expanding our urban tree canopy is the most cost-effective strategy for making Minneapolis more climate resilient. Trees sequester carbon, but they do so much more. They capture storm water so it doesn't flow into our rivers and lakes. They filter air pollutants. They cool our heat islands in our cities and they reduce energy costs, both heating and cooling costs, and they provide wildlife and pollinator habitat. Our urban tree canopy must be viewed as an essential component of our urban infrastructure that keeps Minneapolis economically vibrant 
and a wonderful place for all of our residents to live. Just like transit systems or water systems, urban tree canopy is infrastructure. Research shows that the trees canopy across Minneapolis can be increased 30 to 40 percent. And planting and maintaining more trees will provide new jobs for a green economy here in the city. But growing our urban tree canopy is going to require more funding. The mayor's proposed $1 million is a spectacular commitment, and Green Minneapolis is working to increase funding at the state levels and at the federal levels as well for urban tree canopy. As well, Green Minneapolis is launching the state of Minnesota's first urban tree carbon credits program, which will bring new funding for trees from the private sector. Green Minneapolis isn't doing this work alone. The Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board and the City of Minneapolis have been founding partners of this work with amazing leadership from Board Chair Meg Forney, Commissioner Stephanie Musich, City Council Member Lene Palmisano, Minneapolis Sustainability Director Kim Havey, Superintendent Al Bangora, and Assistant Superintendent Jeremy Barrick. And we have several environmental nonprofits who have joined our coalition for urban tree canopy. The Nature Conservancy, the Trust for Public Land, the Minneapolis Parks Foundation, and the Friends of the Mississippi River. Thank you to the Park and Recreation Board and the City of Minneapolis for your leadership and commitment to making Minneapolis more climate resilient. So it's a pretty straightforward proposition here, and we are going to grow the, grow the tree canopy and plant more trees, but we'll open it to any questions you might have. Anyone? All right. Thank you, everybody.